Welcome to God, Sex, and You, a daily discipleship podcast on healthy sexuality. Here's your host, Purity Pastor, Dustin Daniels. Yesterday, we talked about how our personal view of gender, how that is so crucial to how we minister to others. And that was a great conversation as we wrap up our introduction to the theology of the human body today. In this lesson, we're going to discuss what this conversation is really about, and that a lot of it has to deal with politics and why it can be so hostile and why it's so important for the for Christians and the, and the church to engage. So in today's podcast, we're going to discuss several things. Number one, why this conversation is not really about your beliefs as a Christian, but rather a revolt against God himself. Number two. What is objective reality versus subjective fantasy? And number three, is the LGBT, the fight for their rights and and sexual freedom today, is that the same fight that black men and women fought for in the 1960s? Well, let's find out. Today's lesson is titled, The War on the Ordinary Family. Key point number three, homosexuality and transgenderism is a war against the ordinary family. Now, please note that those are two different items. They're they're not lumped in, but both of them are a war against the ordinary traditional family that we talked about in Genesis. It's a revolt against God's design for marriage. And while they rail at God, the sexual revolutionaries, their whole goal is to make us uncomfortable. They want to rob you of being ordinary and your convictions and your perceptions that are actually grounded in reality. That's grounded in God's Word. That's grounded in Christ-centered faith. This book right here, is called Objective Reality versus Subjective Fantasy. So let me give you an example. That is Abraham Hamilton III. Well, let me back up. So I did a radio show last year. He was my guest. Um, And we talked about whether or not should Christians boycott Target because of their transgender policy. Um, He is a public policy analyst for the AFA, the American Family Association. Abraham is also a pastor. He's also a criminal prosecutor. So he's an attorney and a pastor. Who would have thought? These are two sound bites that I want you to hear about this, this concept of objective reality versus subjective fantasy. This is amazing. that I didn't realize this as a criminal prosecutor, that you have tried individuals personally, yes, and you've personally. seen this firsthand. Yes, I have. Um, it, is, it is very difficult for, lot, for lots of um, uh, the mainstream America to recognize the gross underbelly that exists here in America. But as Christians, I think, we have an idea, because uh, we're familiar with the depravity of humanity, um, but the facts are that there are predators. The reality is that there are more sexual predators in America than there are transgender individuals. I mean, think about that. There are more registered sex offenders in our country mm. than transgender individuals. So the reality is wow. that Target has just increased the possibility for uh, sexual predatory behavior to occur even more than the opportunity that they have to, as the, as the CEO said in that, that, that uh, soundbite you played, to be inclusive for guests. I mean, this is, this is lunacy. So what he's saying is that we've got the slippery slope going. We've got Target making these huge uh, changes to their policy to allow men, women into men's restrooms and vice versa and, and changing areas. But wait a second. We've got more registered sex offenders that now can use this whole transgender thing and, and go and hang out at Target. 
Here's, some, here's the second sound bite. We mentioned the, the sexual revolution in the 1960s. And even even the CEO of, of, of Target mentioned that in his in the clip that we played at the top of the show is that they were some of the first to engage in a bathroom policy um, of race in the 1960s. And we hear this this association of race and sexual uh, freedom together. What is your thoughts on that? Uh, first of all, it may not be obvious, but I'm a black man myself. And I find mm. the association between the civil rights struggle of the 60s with this sexual deviancy agenda to be insulting and appalling. Mm. Let us not forget that the struggle of the 60s was not just one of you know, equal opportunity. It goes all the way back to the, 14, to the 1500s, where black people in America struggled for recognition of personhood, of humanity. We were struggling to be recognized as human beings. Right. And it was based on wow. immediately discernible, immutable characteristics, meaning that you see my black skin from a mile away. Mm. It cannot change. It will not change. Mm. And it's immediately discernible. This notion of sexual deviancy and transgenderism, first, with sexual conduct, nobody would know what you do in your bedroom unless you told them. Right. Secondarily, this notion of transgenderism is, by definition, Mutable. So how can you create a protected legal class based on a clandestine behavior that is attached to mutable characteristics? The two are not synonymous, and it actually is an offensive comparison. The reason I played that clip was because the laws that are changing. You guys may hear the, the news stories of, of um, the, the churches that are now trying to defend themselves from allowing women into men's restrooms and vice versa, or having to create a special bathroom, or the special privileges of this idea of, of transgender people. This is where it really gets messy, is that our goal and our job as leaders is to point these people who need Christ to Christ. And yet at the same time, we've got other elements that are making it hard to have that conversation because if we if we don't do certain make certain provisions inside of our own churches with these laws, then we're called haters and bigots. These will be aggressive, guys. If this goes through all the way, someone seriously the way he looks with the beard, and he's a man because he said. He identifies as a woman. He will be able to go yes. to the restroom. Now, yes. and you think about right now, we're thinking about Target, right? Now, this is how it's going to get aggressive. There will be people in the future who will target your church and say, I will go in there and prove it and get arrested or get thrown out or whatever in your church to prove this point. That is coming. Someone like us walk in knowing that we'll be cussed at or thrown out or get out of here and all that and we will have lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit. Does that make sense to everyone? And this isn't just because they might happen to drop by, they will target our churches. I heard recently um, that Theo Hobson, which I think is an English theologian, said uh, moral revolution means not just the advocacy of new morality, but destruction of the old one and condemnation of the ones who subscribe to the old ones. Mm -hmm. I think that's wow. what's playing out here. We're going to talk more about, about that concept uh, tomorrow as well. If you are a church leader and do not have policies in place regarding this sexual revolution that we're in, I pray that you make it a priority this week. If you need someone to facilitate that discussion with your church leadership, let me encourage you to jump on the website at DustinDaniels.org. Send me an email, and I can help facilitate that discussion. I would love the opportunity to come alongside of you, because these are serious questions. What are you going to do when members of the LGBT demand to be married in your church? 
What are you going to do when transgender people demand to use the bathroom that corresponds with their gender identity? And not only that, but are these things incorporated into your bylaws? I pray that you do have these things in place, but if you don't, once again, please email me, and uh, I would love to come alongside you and your church so we can start working on these things. Lastly, guys, check out the new website. It has uh, over 200 episodes of the podcast and the radio show, once again, dealing with all things dealing with sexuality, marriage, and the family. There's also a new store tab, and for the first time, you can actually purchase uh, our materials, and it's really, really exciting. It's, it's so neat how God has worked these things out with the release of the book coming out in January. Um, on the website right now, on the store, is basically it's an individual study that addresses pornography or pornography addiction or the habit that you can't break. It's an individual study. And uh, basically, all you have to do is just listen to 15 to 20 minutes of a lesson each day for the next month. How hard is that? It's, I will take you through Genesis 1 and 2. I will teach you God's design for sex, marriage, and the family. And then also, I will teach you the triggers the, the roadmap as to where you are inside this spiral of sin. So check it out. Once again, go to DustinDaniels.org, click on store. And if you do order that today, you can receive 20% off with that promotional code podcast. Well, thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and You. I'm Dustin Daniels. You can follow me on Twitter at Purity Pastor. You can email me your questions. I would love to hear from you at DustinDaniels.org. And let's remember that the kingdom of God isn't just a lot of talk. It's living in God's power. And that power, guys, it's the very name. It's the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's how much he loves and cares for you. So I want you to walk worthy today, my friend. As you cling to him, as you pray with him, as you walk with him all day long. I love you, and I look forward to our time again tomorrow. <laughs>